Okay. All right. Good afternoon. Welcome. I'm Mike McCarran, Director of Community Affairs. Uh, thank you for coming out this afternoon. It's my great pleasure to introduce the Director of San Francisco National Airport, Mr. John Martin. John. Thank you for being here today for this uh, update on airport security. San Francisco International Airport has a uh, long history of being a leader on the security front. Our aim is always to set the standard for airports in uh, security initiatives, particularly in using uh, technology to ensure the highest levels of security while also providing the highest level of uh, customer service for the passengers. We also especially emphasize teamwork and coordination uh, between the airport and our sister agencies, including the San Francisco Police Department, Transportation Security Administration, Customs and Border Patrol, Federal Air Marshals. I'd like to uh, now introduce uh, Mayor Gavin Newsom, who's really supported and continued to lead the way in ensuring that the effort, uh, that the airport is a leader among U.S. airports. And he'll brief you on some of the uh, initiatives that are underway today. Thanks, John, and thank you all for coming out. We started getting a bunch of calls individually from some of you, and we thought we'd take this opportunity, particularly after President Obama's speech yesterday, to update you on uh, where we are as it relates to security at this uh, international airport. As you know, this is, and I say this not as its mayor, but this is truly uh, one of not the United States premier airports, but one of the world's leading airports, not just in terms of passenger volume, but in terms of technology, in terms of the framework uh, that has advanced and allowed this airport to continue to lead by example. Uh, this is an airport going back well over a decade ago that was among the first in the nation to experiment with new technologies. Uh, we're consistently on the forefront of cargo screening technology, on the forefront of the utilization of closed circuit te television, CCTV uh, cameras. We've been on the forefront of technology, not least of which the one you see behind me that's getting so much attention uh, in the press, and that's obviously the whole body imaging uh, and the availability now of these whole body imaging uh, test sites, at, or rather these whole body imaging scanners at 19 airports as pilots uh, that had been established about a year or so ago. Let me repeat that. Uh, about 12 months ago, we were one of 19 airports to receive these whole body imaging scanners. We had actually received the technology a few years prior to that. The technology sat here uh, in some, I would refer to as beta tests, but never fully uh, adopted and implemented and integrated uh, into the screening uh, of our passengers. About 12 months ago, we started to use this technology. This technology has gotten a lot of attention, and some of the attention, I think, has been particularly negative. Uh, I'm here as a strong supporter of the technology, as someone that's seen it work, that's someone that has helped promote it and support it, uh, utilizing our federal representatives, particularly our two senators and congressional delegation, in order to enhance the likelihood that this technology will continue to be funded and supported. We've had it up for a year, and we have not received. Now, we can go back in our files, uh, but based upon the correspondence I've received in the mayor's office, not one complaint. Here at the airport, there's not been a complaint submitted formally to the airport commission. Uh, we have not received indirectly any correspondence, let alone directly any correspondence, of the thousands and thousands of people that have actually gone through this uh, with any formal complaint. My point of saying this is we, as an airport, support the technology, and we would like more of these whole body imaging technologies or systems. I keep referring to them as WBIs. Uh, privately, and now I'm having a difficult time organizing my thoughts around what the actual technology, because there's a lot of different versions of this technology, uh, how best to uh, use normal language or nomenclature. But there is a technology now that is separate from this that's also being proffered and offered that we're also interested in. But this technology you see behind me is what they call the millimeter technology, not the back scatting technology. Uh, which John will talk a little bit more about. But this technology has been out there, about $180,000, something we support, something we want to promote, something we believe in, something that no one, to our knowledge, has formally complained about. 
uh, in something that we think is important to the security of this airport uh, and its success in the future. We also are announcing a $5 million investment in upgrading our security cameras. About 10 years ago, we had 150 cameras at this airport. By the way, that was more than most airports. Today, we have well over 1,000 of these cameras. Now we're focused on quality. We still have very high quality cameras, but we're able to get a $5 million grant recently, and now we're investing that grant into updating the technology, this megapixel technology. So it'll be state of the art, the highest level of security camera technology uh, that we know of anywhere in the country. This airport, again, uh, has been well managed from a security perspective. Uh, it's a leader. Uh, I think we have one of the most outstanding uh, airport directors in the nation. Uh, we have a remarkable team, Ed Gomez and his team, great partnerships with air marshals, great partnerships with customs, great partnerships with our regional partners from the sheriff's office in San Mateo County, obviously to our own police department, uh, led by now Police Chief Gascon. So I will turn it over to the chief. He could talk a little bit more about some of the supplemental work that we're doing as a police department, and then we'll answer any questions more specifically as it relates to questions and concerns about this whole body technology and our desire to see the San Francisco Airport continue its leadership uh, with this technology in the future. Chief. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And what we want to do is we want to reassure the public, the, the nearly 80,000 people that come through this airport on a daily basis and their extended family and the men and women that work in this facility, that this is a secure facility. Uh, the men and women of the San Francisco Police Department, TSA, our other federal partners, San Mateo County Sheriff, we're fully committed to providing the safest flying environment that we can. Uh, we have increased our footprint in this facility. We're increasing the training. Uh, we're enhancing the information sharing between law enforcement agencies and other personnel in the airport. We want to reassure everyone that uses this facility that this is a state-of-the-art facility that has the highest level of security that we can provide and that we will continue to improve our footprint in this facility as we move on. Again, this is an international facility. This is a world-class city and you have world-class security here, and we want to let everyone know so. Thank you. I should note before John takes over that there are some important protocols that are in place with that technology you see behind me. First and foremost, the person or persons that review the image is not physically present next to the machine. They're separated and isolated elsewhere. The technology does not allow anyone to print out an image. So those that are concerned that they go through a full body scan, that they're gonna have their image that somehow could be shared, we do not have the technology to even allow that to take shape. Second, or thirdly, after you have your image taken, the next person that comes in automatically then erases your image. So it goes in order again of the number of users. And fourthly, your face, there's no facial recognition. We have technology, what they call pixelated technology, that basically erases the picture, or rather the image of someone's face. I know the biggest concern is that I go through there, you go through that, and all of a sudden someone can download that image, someone can share that image, someone can show that image as being your image. The protocols that are in place here at the airport are very stringent. You will simply be fired if you mess with any of those protocols. And there's very strong procedures in place to secure and guarantee that none of these protocols are breached. The civil liberty concerns are always legitimate and they're worthy of debate. But when we piloted this technology, we made sure that these protocols were in place. And the advocacy on behalf of this technology is advocacy for the technology and advocacy to continue to maintain those privacy protocols to secure people uh, that their images will not be used or abused by not only those that work here, but other agencies that can take those images and proffer them and use them uh, in any other way. With that, I'll ask John to come back up. I'd like to uh, again support the use of the whole body imaging technology as the most effective security tool in screening passengers. And the, uh, with the mayor's support, the airport will be 
working to try and see that many more of these devices are deployed at the airport and um, that that's the direction the U.S. should go overall is the, both the rapid and widespread use of this technology to most effectively screen passengers. The TSA, I think, has properly addressed the privacy concerns and it's just a reality of this world that we need to use this uh, technology to most effectively screen passengers. Wanted to also mention a couple other projects that, that we're working on uh, beyond the upgrade to the CCTV system that the mayor mentioned. Uh, we're also upgrading our access control system. This is a biometric access control system where all of the employees use that system before access, accessing the airfield. All uh, 17,000 employees who are badged at the airport um, go through a background uh, check under federal regulations and we actually exceed the uh, federal standards in the use of that of those requirements and we're investing three million dollars in up upgrading our existing ID badging system that's attached to that uh, biometric accessing system and we'll just begin issuing new badges next week in fact. We are also just completed work on a new vulnerability assessment an independent consulting firm came in, uh, led by the former director of security for the Ben-Gurion Airport in Israel. Uh, he did a study for us about uh, four years ago, so he's come back in and uh, has done a new study that helps us to identify additional steps we can take in ensuring that, in fact, this airport is in the lead in uh, having setting standards for security at U.S. airports and world airports. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll now open it up for questions. Well, how many scanners would we like to see at the airport? Well, we, we, we've been talking, we just had a uh, security briefing in the back. Ideally, you'd like it at every, every point of entry into the airport. So there are roughly seven uh, points where we would like them. So we'd love six more. Uh, obviously, you'd want redundancy, so you want some backups, uh, but we would certainly look to have them in every appropriate location, and that's roughly so. Yes. And as you know, just for what it's worth, if you, if just to the extent that you're writing this or reporting this, this is the international side that also houses, is the home base for Virgin, which has domestic uh, as well as JetBlue. So while it's technically mostly for international travelers, it also has been used in the last year or so for domestic passengers as well. Yeah, we're, we're not at that phase or stage yet. I mean, the concern about this technology is it takes anywhere from two to three times longer to process you. If you're going to move forward with this technology at all these points and you're going to have every single passenger screened, clearly you're going to see longer lines than the lines you see behind us. So those protocols need to be appropriately established by security personnel. They have very specific protocols to who goes through there, who doesn't. There's a voluntary component to the pilot phase that we have today. Uh, but nonetheless, if you're going to go through a pat down, the opportunity to go through this avails itself. Uh, but I think in the future, you're certainly going to see uh, more, uh, more likely uh, longer lines uh, be, until this technology is fast tracked and is less or rather takes a lot, a lot less time. Are you, are you immediately planning to get any additional ones? Or We've been advocating. Out? What's interesting about, and I think the significance about what we've been doing is we've been advocating for a long time now. Uh, we, we're, we've been working with our two senators. I know uh, Director Martin in August of last year uh, came into my office with a letter that we sent to our senators advocating for this technology and making a case at a time, you may recall, last year there was a push in Congress to deappropriate and to move away from this technology. We had the technology in place. It was working. Again, no complaints and no concerns that we had uh, reflected or received. And so we were advocating to continue uh, the funding and to find additional funding. Ideally, we'd like to find federal dollars for this. We, 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 Security is our top priority. Money is not a big issue here. These, the technology here is not in the multi-millions of dollars. If you've got seven or eight of these things, we can find the resources, uh, but we'd like to see those resources come from the federal government. But my, my question is, is there any plan at this point, any timetable, to put well, them Well, Congress has appropriated 150 new machines with an additional 300 
that they're working towards, but at least 150 of these uh, by the end of this calendar year, and then another 150 that they've committed to. So there'll be upwards of 300 new machines that will be federally funded. We're one of 19 airports. There are about 40 of these machines that are being utilized in 19 airports today. This always being a demonstration airport and a leader has been on the forefront. We will most likely be uniquely positioned to get additional machines, uh, hopefully in the next few months, but certainly within, I think, the end of the calendar year. And John, I don't know if you want to amplify that further. Actually, I just wanted to ask you a question about baggage screening. The last time I was out here, which was a couple of years yeah. ago, you were not screening all bags that didn't go up, that went into the cargo. Oh. Are you doing that now? All, uh, all bags, all passenger bags are screened using CTX technology, and we were the first airport in the country that uh, achieved that level of screening. Um, does that answer the question? No bag that goes on a plane either at this airport or from another airport that this is a stop Every airport. single passenger bag is screened. And Barbara, to the extent I can amplify that, through our federal recovery dollars, the AARP dollars, we received $15.3 million for Terminal 2, uh, for the new international. Uh, we've already expended about $3 million of that. We'll have the latest baggage screening technology in the country, but $15.3 million of federal stimulus money helping amplify or rather reflect on that question. Have you been contacted by the administration about new security updates based on the reviews that are supposed to be coming in? Uh, I think uh, in terms of new security updates coming from Washington, uh, nothing that I can disclose and just I, I know what, what you know, basically, is that the president said that in the coming days he expects that new requirements, new measures will be announced. So. Remember, we have, we have measures going out and we have measures coming in. By no means is the screening done when you get on a plane and you get here. Uh, there's other protocols in place, and I can assure you, not surprisingly, things are, have been enhanced and will continue to be enhanced. Grant fund, $5 million, basically takes the existing cameras, replaces some of the older technology, by no means old technology, with the latest megapixel technology. Uh, and this, this is kind of technology to be envious of if you support and like the technology. Uh, but uh, this will continue to allow San Francisco International Airport to be a leader. I, I, I don't want to overstate this, but I don't know that there's a month that goes by, John, where you don't have an international delegation in here, even a national delegation, reviewing some of the security apparatus and technologies that are coming through here. In addition, that $5 million will not only replace some of the older cameras, but also will allow for some additional security uh, investment behind the scenes, uh, which I would probably be inappropriate to talk about in uh, too much detail, but there's an additional component to that $5 million expenditure beyond just the physical camera technology. There's some back office technology as well. This is a, an independent grant separate from the AARP dollars, uh, part of the annual grants that we go after at the airport. Specific things, because uh, this is, uh, was a grant that you had in the works yeah. prior to the Detroit Amsterdam plane incident. Are there any specific things that you have done here at this airport since that incident? I mean, did it cause you to say, oh, we need more screeners, we need more checkpoints, we need more anything? Or did you feel that this airport was already uh, doing everything that it really should be doing? I, I feel confident in the airport's overall approach. and. Uh, as the airport director, I have broad overall responsibility for security. TSA has a responsibility for the screening of the passengers and the goods going on the aircraft. And uh, I think only TSA could really speak to the additional activities and measures that they've taken. I wouldn't want to speak for them. And uh, I think that Customs and Border Patrol may well have also taken additional actions. And again, they should answer that, that question directly. Uh, the, Police department may want to add something on that. 
Well, even before this event occurred, we have uh, discussed with the airport in increasing the presence of the San Francisco Police Department here. Uh, we are increasing training. Uh, we're actually cross-training other personnel that normally would not work in the airport. Uh, one of the things that we're trying to do in a very quick fashion is to increase the number of men and women within the San Francisco Police Department that can work comfortably in the airport environment. There's different levels of training, there are different requirements, and, and we're working and have been working towards the increase of the footprint now for several months. Certainly we will continue to do so. Uh, obviously we don't want to get into the details of the number of people, but rest assured that we are being very proactive in providing very uh, strong presence of the police department and also working with our federal partners here. And, and Barbara, let me answer that question as a civilian. I want to see more of this whole body imaging technology. And that's, again, we've been a leader on this. We were one of the 19 sites of the pilot. It's been working for over a year with no complaints. I know folks are coming out of the woodwork now complaining about it, and I appreciate those civil liberty concerns. We've addressed them substantially, and we certainly want to be front and center in terms of any subsequent appropriation uh, for the federal funding of this technology. What's the status of your contract with Covenant and why do you still think private versus government? The question is on the status of the uh, private screening company. Uh, the airport, uh, under a federally uh, established program, uh, chose to use a private screening company to conduct all of the screening of the passengers and, uh, and the baggage. Uh, that contractor reports to the TSA. TSA selected that contractor. Every indication is that the uh, contractor is doing an outstanding job, uh, both in the screening of passengers and goods. Uh, from a security point of view and from a customer service point of view, it's also allowed the TSA personnel to focus their attention appropriately on security rather than having to deal uh, with human resources issues. Uh, so leaving that to the private company to deal with the uh, personnel issues. So I think the program's been very effective for this airport. What's the status of the contractor? You're about up for review? The, or? The, uh, it, the, there's an existing contract with the TSA. I, um, there's some time left on it. I'm not aware of any uh, imminent um, end to that contract. And we expect the program will continue using the private screening company. You, know, you had an issue with liability with the government and whether they were going to ensure if there were terrorism or any attacks. Did you ever work through that? What, who, the insurance that you were having from the government, you were having an issue about, did you work through that? You're really getting into a real detail. Uh, there was a question on whether the airport had proper liability protection as a result of our uh, selection of using the uh, private screening uh, company. And yes, we did ex obtain specific language through a congressional bill, bill that gives us that, uh, that protection. Anything else, guys? Thank you all for coming out.